Welcome to Wildspire. You get to be a fly on the wall for my intimate conversations with entrepreneurs who are changing the world. I'm your host, Stephanie Benedetto, coach, storyteller, and unmarketer at The Awakened Business, helping coaches and change-making entrepreneurs unleash their inspired message and share it with playful unmarketing. I'll ask curious questions and explore uncharted waters with my guests today. Anything can happen when we step into the unknown of infinite creativity, and that's where we're going to play. My guest today is Anthony Traher, who has a love for play that won me over immediately. His story, which is quite fascinating, you'll get some tidbits of it in our conversation, includes experience juggling as a street performer, clowning, and really studying what it is that's going on with us in play, as well as integrating a spiritual approach to it. So all of these elements create a very fascinating perspective and experience that Anthony has to share. Let me tell you a little bit more about Anthony Traher. Anthony Traher is a passionate advocate for the power of play and personal transformation. With over two decades of experience, Anthony has dedicated his life to helping individuals rediscover their playfulness and rewrite their life's rule book. Anthony's mission is to empower individuals to live life on their terms, free from self-imposed limitations and filled with the boundless possibilities that a playful mindset offers. An ex-professional juggler turned yogi and life coach. Originally from the UK, he now resides in Italy, devoted to permaculture and off-grid living. He has authored two books, Pearls of Juggling and Meeting Life. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Anthony. So hello, Anthony. Welcome to the Wild Spire podcast. I'm so pleased to have you as my guest today and loving all the books behind you. If you're watching the video, you'll be able to see them. But if not, there are many, many, many books behind you. Very colorful, very inviting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Steph. I'm bringing my books with me. Um, yeah, I'm going to just say this straight, straight away to this thing. I was, ho- ho- I held, um, I was holding a yoga class in, in, my, in my house the other day. I normally do it in, uh, in a yurt in the garden. And the man said, I could, he'd really feel the weight of all these books in the room, you know? <laughs> so it's like, they, they have a weight to, the, to them as well, you know, all these words, it's all like interesting stuff in there. And uh, But they also have weight, you know? knowledge has weight to it somehow as well. But uh, mm-hmm. anyway. That's interesting. One of the things that I've I've come to know about you, Anthony, as I've, I've talked to you and listened to you a little bit, is the tremendous amount of information that you take in the knowledge that you have, the reading that you do, the experiences that you've had and, you know, how you're always like learning and pulling things together and trying things. So it actually makes perfect sense to me that you would have books behind you. And I think that's fascinating because what drew me to you was learning about the playfulness festival that you've been having in Italy and, you know, play, it's like, that's the magic word for me. And I thought, what an interesting com- combination. So, like, what is it that, what has inspired the Playfulness Festival and your passion for playfulness and helping people to engage more in that way? Yeah, it's, um, I think it's always been a big part of my life, this this aspect of playfulness. And um, the, the way I, I sort of narrate this this story as I understood it is that I was doing um, an online course with Charles Eisenstein about living in the gift and in that course um, we were working on our talents like what it is we have to give to the world you know like living in the gift you have something to gift right and it came and it popped out for me that playfulness was the thing about my gift and um, it wasn't a surprise to the people I know. They was like, of course, <laughs> of course, that, that's what, yeah. But I hadn't ever really seen it as a thing. Um, you know, it was, I saw it as a modality. And um, now I see it more as even like a movement, you know. it's mm. um, It brings with it a lot of things, playfulness. But um, 
So anyway, I was doing all this research around playfulness with like uh, with my new idea. This is my gift. And um, I'd already read quite a few books, um, writings by Bernie de Coven. And um, he's got some really cool stuff, um, s spiritual, philosophical, around play and playfulness, what it means, how we co-liberate other people through playing. Um, and... Um, and so I was looking into um, how to find out more about playing and playfulness. And then I came across this, this playfulness festival in Denmark, Counterplay, which they, they stopped they stopped doing it for a, a few years now anyway. And um, and I had to go there. <laughs> I had to go to this playfulness festival. And it was in Denmark, so it was all very, really organized. You know, there were like touchscreen computers on the walls in this library. And... Uh, nothing quite like it is in italy you know italy's very uh everything works very well but it's not like super technological right and um there were lots of academic talkers about playfulness there and there were lots of practical things and um and i'd already i already had this feeling that i would like to bring a festival into the village where i live here because it's such a beautiful medieval village here in italy and um i talked to the mayor at that time and i just suggested him said like what do you think about it? and he was like oh yeah do it and I was like, oh, okay. So, um, so yeah, I put together the first edition in, in the village, and um, and it was great. It was great. And um, then, the, then the, the lockdown happened um, for the next year. So we did an online version. So I talked, met lots of people all around the world, and I keep meeting people all around the world that are there, that they're bringing playfulness into their things, and some really very um, special uh, special people. And um, and then um, then we started to do it in um, in this sort of like um, how do you say like sort of like a like a sort of camping ground. It's not really a camping ground, but it's um, it's an eco, I would say it's like an eco village. It's like it wants to be an eco village anyway. <laughs> it's getting there to be an eco village. So it's like very much out of the city. And um, and the first edition there, this is where I really sort of started to really believe a lot more in this work. And the first edition there, what I saw after just two days, it lasted for four, like four and a half days. After two days, I could just see that people were coming back to really back to their humanity. You know, they they sort of like dropped things. They were being like more kind to everybody, more available. And this might happen in all sorts of different like retreat situations, right? But it was something very special that um, people that didn't even know each other um, just felt that they were really connected into a big tribe and they could just be themselves and be silly and laugh and yeah. Mm, that's cool. You know, I had a, an experience of that last weekend while I was at the Yoko Ono exhibit at the Tate Modern Museum in London. And I met my Airbnb host there who I had just met, I don't know, 12 hours earlier, right? And he met me because he hadn't seen the exhibit. And if you know anything about Yoko Ono, she was always doing weird shit, right? Like she had this performance artist thing that she was doing in the 60s and 70s and nobody got it at the time. They just thought she was annoying and she was vilified or whatever. But now she has an exhibit in this in the Tate Modern Museum. But she had she has interactive performances and paintings that she would write about and then you can act them out like one is I actually made a video of this painting to hammer a nail and the idea is you know your painting is you go to a you have a, a blank wall or a canvas and you you hammer a nail in and you tie a piece of your hair around it that you've picked up from the morning and then when the when the canvas is filled your painting is done and so they actually had these available for people to do. We got to hammer nails and we got to draw on this wall and we got to take a piece of sky home with us. They had hats hanging from the ceiling. And one of the things that they had was a, a piece that she did where you have a, a person get into a bag and just move around on the stage until they're done. And that's the performance. And so people who were attending could do that. And I looked at my host and I'm like, I'm going to do that. And then when we got up there, the woman who was assisting, she looked at both of us and said, like, okay, here, you guys both get in. And I was like, we're both going to do it together. Like, I just met this guy. So I, 
I, we get into this bag and we're like dancing around inside of this black bag and we can just see out and no one can see us. And it was so much fun, Anthony. It was like, talk about a bonding experience with my, this guy that I just met. And we ended our, our little dance performance with a hug inside this bag that people could see that we were hugging and someone was really moved by it. And it was just so, it was such a blast. And afterward, there was a, a guy there who was taking pictures and like he, we all became friends, like immediately we were connected by that playful experience of just, just creating together. It's kind of how it felt. And it was wonderful. So I could see that happening just by giving people permission to go ahead and play. Yeah, no, that's it. Wonderful, wonderful story. Yeah. Yeah, art and playfulness and um, it's all very connected, interactive. When art becomes interactive, it becomes more playful, definitely. Yeah. So what is it that you're seeing for yourself about playfulness? Like, how has it changed your life when you hmm. go deeper into it? Because you've really been like studying it as well as practicing, right? And yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Okay, so what I'd noticed as well is that um, a sort of like serious uh, cloud had settled over me, right? And I couldn't quite put my finger on what the hell this thing was, right? And um, I realized that it's it wasn't so much about me, but around the whole context that I'm in. So, mm. like, I'm going back to, like, why did I start this, this playfulness festival as well? Because I realized that I needed to be with people that are playful as well to help me to liberate myself as well in, into, um, into a more playful state. So, um, one thing, like, if, if, let's say that um, we all have a special way of thinking, right? I have a mind that's very divergent. <clears throat> I can think up all sorts of different ideas on things. And it zaps a bit all over the place, right? And um, so I guess with playfulness, I've learned to uh, embrace this side of me a little bit more. You know? And um, and um, I don't know, you know, it's uh, I always like to greet people with a bit of enthusiasm. You know, it's like, hello! <laughs> and like, really, you know, um, and I mean it, you know, it's not just being like fake about it. And um, I've just started teaching... Um, I did 10 years of kids yoga, uh, Stephanie, where I was teaching like really small kids in the end, you know, they were, they were, um, um, it, in the last few years I was teaching kindergarten, you know, like one and a half to two and a half year olds. And it's, it's incredible. It was incredible what I was doing with these kids. And, um, I just started this again after four years of this, this lockdown thing. Right. And, um, so good to play with these kids. It's, um, they get it they get me you know and they're they're all game they're all game for it they're not like running around all over the place they do a little bit but it's they're not um i've got them under my radar you know i know what's going on <laughs> and uh yeah and, and it's just i just love accompanying this evolutionary process of discovering your body how it moves um listening to quiet as if it was a game um interacting with other kids um uh and just how like lesson after lesson this really this just just like blows their mind into like what's possible because as adults we're so we're very we're boring you know <laughs> we're like sit down we stand up we walk we get in a car um we cook you know we're not dancing in the kitchen like not many of us are so children don't have like little kids they need this um they need to see people doing crazy things, not crazy things with the body, but being a little bit more um, animal with their bodies, right? Let, let's say using their bodies um, in, um, <sighs> yeah, it, just having fun with your body, you know? <laughs> they need to see this stuff. Otherwise, they become, they grow up too fast as well, kids. And, um, yeah, so... Um, so yeah, what am I learning as well? It's um, <clears throat> I suppose it's like activating this state a little bit more, you know. And um, I just recently um, 
just heard this 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 definition of like what needs to happen for you to start on the path of um, playfulness, no, on the playful path, let's say like this. And there were three things that really struck me that came out. And one of them was um, a loving heart. And the second one was a joyful mind. And the third one was a vibrant body. And when you've got these three, three things sorted out, or like um, you, you, you've got them under your radar, then you can enter into the, 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 the playful path. So this, for me, it's, um, I'm always looking for this sort of uh, um, distinctions, you know, how to understand how playfulness is. And, um, and it's not just, I'm serious, I'm playful. You know, there's a whole series of, um, you know, like, like the first steps is really to be able to see around us that things, there are things that are playful. There are things that aren't doing things for any particular reason, you know, they're perhaps they're, I mean, I mean, this is like a bit poetic, right? But there's trees blowing in the wind. You notice it uh, when you slow down and, and allow like this sort of game to take past, or you notice more obvious things like kids playing, um, laughing as they're doing so animals. They also always like, and just interacting with this sort of, these sort of um, playful energies um, awakens um, this loving heart and this joyful mind. And um, so that's like the first step. And then we can sort of like see who is trying to interact with us in a playful way. But this is all about relationships. And um, so if, you know, children, they're, sometimes they're very direct and they say, um, would you like to play with me? You know, or, or our friends, you know, they say, but other times it's not so direct, you know, it's more... Um, it's hidden somehow so we have to be, have a really have our eyes open and our ears open to hear these moments and um and say yes to them and say yes to them because uh we get, i get caught up in my things too right <laughs> and i'm like i'm not open to anything anymore and perhaps that's okay you know but like every now and again got to snap out of this thing and um so then after we see this uh we sort of see these invites then we're able to start inviting other people and when we start inviting other people into playfulness um whether it's like would you like to play frisbee with me to catch this ball let's dance together you know or 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 jumping in a bag in a museum <laughs> you know it's like there, there there's an invitation there you know mm -hmm. and uh and um but we've got to do this step by step if we start off inviting people before we've really understood that then Oh, it might be okay, eh? But I think it's it's um perhaps a big too big a leap um to take. And then afterwards it's like how long can you permeate in a state um where I mean it gets what I've seen is it gets really deep in this whole idea of playfulness, you know, it's really like where you see the whole of the world as being a creation that's being created. Um moment by moment around you and you're taking part in it you can decide not to take part in it uh, you can see your role in it um where really it start all starts to become more of a game where there's no drama to it um i wouldn't say it's um we accept it as an we see it as an illusion you know like maya um th this sort of idea it's more this idea of a leela um and that's like the top state. I mean, I'm not saying I'm in this top state, right? But I know that there's this top state. So that's what interests me. Mm -hmm. um, this like freedom. And um, when I talk about breaking your rules, you know, and um, it's not about being like, just like being rude. <laughs> it's like um, with all these like mental constructs we've got in our head, like I have to do this, I can't do this, or I shouldn't do this, and this and the other things. Um they weigh us down enormously and, and make make life seem like a terrible uh, slug, you know, slog, hard work. Mm. Mm. There is, you know, I had this experience. I was telling you earlier about the transformational event that I went to over the weekend. And at one point, 
I laughed so hard. I couldn't stop laughing. And I almost fell off my chair, that kind of hard laughing. And it was because I was seeing the cosmic joke. Mm. You know, like I was seeing how beautiful and how, how we create so much pain and suffering for ourselves and we don't see it. And it came from a comment that one of the facilitators said she was talking about work she had done with women in prison. These women had been in prison for murder. And she said, the only difference between those prisoners and me, as far as the, the thoughts that come into our heads, was that they were in a low enough mood when that thought came in that it looked like a good idea and they acted on it. Because mm. the same thoughts have occurred to me and at the moment, it's not occurring to me as funny in this moment, but at the moment, I could just see how I make such a big deal about what's going on in my head, the movie playing in my head, and it means nothing until I make it mean something. And we're all in that. We're all in it together. And it just was so funny. And I think to me, and this is just how it comes through me, right? Uh, People would probably, uh, they associate playfulness with me. I use words like play and adventure and quest and like game all the time. But I'm not really doing gamey things necessarily. It's just the way I see the world. And so mm -hmm. when, when I feel life, when I feel the universe move through me, it feels like it's laughing. Like I feel like life is always laughing. Like it's playing and laughing. Not at us, but enjoying delighting in everything the whole game of being human the whole game of life with its dramas is like joyful to the aliveness of life itself and when i when i'm not taking my thinking so seriously that heaviness you're saying knowledge can be heavy right because it it just wants to keep it wants to get things right. You were talking about um, mm, yeah. certainty and making sure that we're safe and we get the right results. It's so heavy. When we drop out of that, we can actually feel the aliveness of life moving through us, which is always happening anyway. And when it does, I see that we return to our natural state like children. We become playful. We, and it looks different for adults than it does kids. And it looks different from some adults, like for you and maybe me, it might be a little more dramatic at times. Like, hey, I'll be like, yeah, let's go do something goofy and like be really strange and weird and, you know, dance around or whatever. Not everybody's like that, but everyone I meet, as soon as they are in a quieter mind and they settle down, I'm like, they, they go, oh, I'm not playful. That's not me. I see it in them. It's the way they joke. It's what they find funny. It's what lights them up. And all of a sudden they're getting delighted. That is playful. It just looks different. So yeah, anything in that that is interesting to you, Anthony, <laughs> I'll pause there because I start to get off. Yeah, sure, of sure. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's really asking us to make a little jump to get into this state of playfulness and and um it's i don't know i don't like to say it like as a higher level of mind activity or beingness it's a higher level integration perhaps and it has sisters or brothers like joy like courage like kindness um yeah there's some other ones that can't that don't come to mind right now but you know when we work on playfulness we're working on all these other aspects of ourselves as well that are always there and um and yeah we we all have this playfulness inside us right and and when we when we touch it we feel more confident we feel more um alive uh we feel more joyful um because it's it's taken us out of this all this all this like self doughty type thing you know it's definitely like playful energy it's definitely like a yes energy you know, <laughs> if we take from like impro, impro comedy, you know, it's this yes and, you know, it's like, yeah, that's a great idea. And what we help building off stuff, you know, it's building. 
it's being curious of what way we can take things and um and um and what one thing i wanted to say that's um uh, that, that that's happened right is that when when people realize and they 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 re they come in, in contact with their playfulness again there can be some grief comes up because it's it's like this playful thing it's been like near me all of this time i didn't even know it was there and i've like wasted all these years not being in contact with my own joy and my own creativity and we start to realize that because we see it obvious straight away because we're not stupid right we see that it was drummed out of us you know so we can also be a bit angry about this thing as well um well, there's so many things that have been taken out of us you know it's um I remember um, this is like going on a right tangent eh? but <laughs> I remember watching this documentary by Stephen Jenkinson uh, grief walker it's called and it was about he like accompanies people into their death right so can we be playful around death that wasn't the point there the point was and I this really touched me that uh this whole thing around death has also been taken away from us you know we don't see dead bodies we don't see all this we don't see so it's so there's so much we're, we're sort of like we're not grounded anywhere you know <laughs> we're sort of like sort of bit like floating around like people and, and playfulness really grounds us when we know like our playful uh personality you know because it doesn't just mean being a joker right i mean lots of people talk about this now it's, there's there's also the explorer and i think the explorer is one of the most probably the base level of playfulness is the explorer type you know it's it's this going on a bike when we're kids um sliding around in the mud it's going into a, an abandoned house um it's just hanging out and um and um this can also be in our minds we can explore like in our meditations this can also be more internal this exploring thing but we're always wondering what's there and looking for it and when we stop to do that it all becomes very granted and very stale and uh we feel like we've done it all already or we know it all already and um and then when this sort of like hardcore boredom hit kicks in we can be very destructive then because we're looking to fill this void with something you know we don't realize it's, it can be as simple as playing right <laughs> so we start to like all sorts of like self-destructive behaviors addictions and and um what they call them keyboard warriors activities and stuff you know <laughs> these sort of things you know and, and even like a keyboard warrior he she is looking anyway for connection with somebody you know they're looking to play but it's just like become so exploded out of um um out of context and so far away from um from like a playful debate around an activity that just becomes very violent and it's unacceptable to be able to interact with somebody um in that way so um yeah i, I just spouted out lots of different <laughs> thoughts on this <laughs> uh, hmm. it's something that is I, I think what for me is so helpful and, you know, the area that I often explore play in with people is inside of their business, which many people are decidedly not playful about business. They're very serious about it. There's a lot of importance, you know, I'm making money and I need to have a valuable service and I'm responsible human being and like heavy, 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 you know, I need to get this right. Pressure, pressure, pressure. We do so much of that. And finding the lightness you know it is inside of us i see that as soon as we we start seeing how we do the heavy we can choose not to you know yeah. we we begin to quite naturally go oh the reason we go into that is because we've been told that's the way it's supposed to be and we really believe it you're supposed to be serious about these things you're supposed to create pressure because otherwise you'll never do anything in your life you know yeah and we can There's look a... yeah go yeah. ahead there's a big thing around trust. Um, mm. Since I, I came back from India now, I don't know, I wouldn't say everybody trusts everybody there, but I felt it a little bit more there, right? A bit more 
and I've uh, come back to Italy now, and it's Europe generally, probably North America as well. It, it's we don't trust anybody, and when we stop trusting, it, it's um it makes it really hard to enjoy, actually enjoy what you're doing, especially if you are on the end of somebody not trusting you. You don't give the best of yourself. You just don't do it. So um, so yeah, I just wanted to wanted to say that with uh, so this this topic around playing business is a really interesting and and um delicate one as well it's um because it could be a bit forced on right oh now we have to play <laughs> and it doesn't work yeah, like that you know it's, you it say to your kid play mm -hmm. dance for me you know they're not going to do it <laughs> right <laughs> right and it's that's that's not i think what either of us are pointing to at least in no. what i see is allowing it to arise naturally, giving yourself permission to explore and be curious and express and look around you first at like, what is playful? Can I see the play around me? And whatever we put our attention to will begin to come more alive and we'll start to find it in us, even if we think that's not me. What is it? How does play express itself through me? How is life living with that aliveness through me? If we do it as a tactic, we can create pressure around that too. Well, I'm clearly not getting this, or there's no way I'm doing that when I'm way too uptight. I'm too uncomfortable. I'm not getting up to dance with Anthony. Are you kidding me? Like, no. But there are little things that are available all the time. Like, I have playful interactions with, when I am open, I have playful interactions with people all the time. It's as much as like joking, smiling you know, um, appreciating. It's, it's not fancy a lot of the time. It's not like I'm, I'm not yeah, a yeah, yeah, too. generally. My particular favorite, particular favorite is, um, um, people in the supermarket, you know, <laughs> in the cat, in the, or, or people that are like really clearly in a role. It's, it's, uh, it's quite a good place to start to be a bit more friendly, friendly, friendly is a good access into playfulness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so you mentioned <laughs> earlier, Anthony, something that I am fascinated by. You said when you're doing yoga with children and you would listen to quiet like a game, what happens? What is that like? Well, it's it's like the difference between saying be quiet or um, it's, very, it's, it's even like, you know, we play this game a, a lot, but if, if we bring it to a bit more awareness, you know, we play music and it stops and we pause. There, in that moment, we're listening to the. Um, it, we, we make silence a game then, um, and it's not like a constriction. Be quiet. Um, it could also be let's listen to the quality. I mean, bigger kids, eh? little kids don't get like listen to the quality of silence, right? <laughs> listen, you know, they don't hear it. Like, they probably wouldn't even like let's listen to the trees, the wind, or something. I don't know. Maybe they do, eh? But um, it's yeah, it's this listening to the opposite of um and i just want to zip back to this thing again um about about this playing and playing in, and there's lots of people that work with making meetings more engaging more effective and all this but even if you just like i read this recently i can't remember who wrote it and i'm really sorry um but uh it was the, the idea was get all your bad ideas out immediately you know, start with all the bad ideas and just like bring smiles to people's faces, mm -hmm. you know, getting all the bad ideas. And um, as I read, read, uh, uh, read about it, and it also said we become less attached to our ideas. Otherwise, we bring, everybody thinks they have the best idea and they don't go anywhere, you know. <laughs> it's like and then somebody else's idea is chosen. And everybody feels like they're bad that they've been left out. And so even just like starting with that sort of process, you know, like. Let's start with like everybody like share a couple of really bad ideas and um and brainstorming generally needs to come from playfulness otherwise it's um it's just way too self censored you know we we were like perhaps you know <laughs> so um if, if it's playful then it can go really crazy directions and come up with brilliant ideas yeah so what what's happening there when we when we give ourselves permission to be playful with something, what are we not doing and what are we doing instead? Like what's happening in that moment? Um, well, one thing we're not taking it as like the be all, all and end all right solution. Um, 
there's um this this famous TED talk, you know, Ken Robinson changing up um, education paradigms, you know, which is about it comes boils down to the school in the end um, teaches us that there's only one right solution. So um, this plays a lot in our lives, you know. Also plays out when we think our life purpose, we want our one solution. You know, it's like this thing we want this one thing, and um, so we're not very comfortable with multiple realities <laughs> mixing together. Um, but um, um, so yeah, I've lost the plot now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can remember what I was asking about. Like, so what is it that we're not doing when we're being playful, and what are we doing instead? So we're not doing this thing of like, there's one answer, there's one right way to do oh, this, yes. and I have to find it. Right? We're not doing that. Yes, yeah, and we're and we're building on it. We're building on it. We're saying yes, and um, I in interviewed um, Clay Drinko recently for, for for my podcast, and um, he's he's a great. He, he does a lot of things like comedy, impro, really very special conversation with this man and um so yeah this yes and is 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 really important um what else aren't we doing you know we're playing this like really shit game um i'm playing this this game which is um i want to be right and you're all wrong essentially in some sort of form of it so that's not a very fun game so when we start to actually realize that what is interesting is what happens between me and you and not what happens in me or you then it becomes more interesting and i'm very happy that um simon sinek has has got dived really deeply into this whole thing about finite and infinite games because this is all about an infinite game is all about playfulness it's all about keeping the game going um um, until somebody's tired of it, or you don't want to do it anymore. It's not because somebody has won, which is the, the finite game. And um, it's really beautiful what he says says about it. And he um, he actually says that um, businesses are finite games. No, no, sorry. They're treated as finite games, but they're actually infinite games. They want to keep going, right? But they behave like they're finite, like they have limits and they have all these sort of things. And um, perhaps there are some limits, right? And we play with them. But they, with a mindset, there's like, we have to be the best, uh, we're going to win. And this doesn't work with an infinite game, you know? Infinite gamers, they're into co collaboration. They're into helping each other out. They're into seeing um, where our meeting points are, um, where both of us aren't talking about something, you know? It's, it's, it's not about being, like, jealously, like, there are competition, you know. <laughs> I don't think we can actually go for much further forward thinking like that. Mm, yeah. Mm. So, Anthony, what is what is really in your heart for people? Like, if you could, if you could show them anything, or share with them a message that you think would make the biggest difference for them, what would that be? Yesterday, I was, um, it's, it's like, it's almost like not planning things so much to the letter, you know, have an idea, a gist of something and go with it. Um, the more I plan things, the more they go wrong, you know, but I have to be a bit careful about this, you know, because it's really important to know what my aim is at the end, you know, what, what it is that I want. And then I know with different tools I can get to that place, right? So not to be so rigid about the process of getting anywhere, but to be clear on where what it what it is, you know, it can be even going for a walk. We're gonna go 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 for a walk with my friend. I want at the end of this walk that we just like feel really good and we've connected, you know, and then you're going to be a little bit more um, perhaps follow each other's pace a little bit more. You know, it's because they're much on really fast and the other person trying to keep up with you or something, you know, it, it just, it just um, allows you to connect more with, um, with the other person. Yeah. Or 
yeah, to know what we want. That, that's really, really uh, important, though. And um, and so, um, yeah, allow yourself, uh, just surprise yourself, surprise yourself. I think that's like, how do you surprise yourself? <laughs> like, I mean, how can you surprise yourself? How can you make yourself surprised, right? It's... Um, It's it's if our life is so full of like things we need we need to do this 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 like super efficient days you know I mean it's brilliant to be like super efficient but if there's no space for um, like unplanned activity then it all becomes a bit tight you know it's in Holland um, I heard that people they they like two or three months in advance they book like a dinner appointment with uh, with friends you know. I mean, it's too much, you know, <laughs> it's too much. Uh, it, it's just all a bit too, um, becomes a bit too stale then, and we're missing this fun in our lives, you know, we're missing it. So um, I, hope, I hope that answered uh, your question, Steph. Yeah, I feel that. You know, I found that I catch myself making assumptions, not just about other people, but about myself. I'm this way. I like these things. I don't like those things. And when I've stopped doing that, the more I show up with myself, curious, what will Stephanie be like today? What will she enjoy today? What kind of mood is she in today? I can surprise myself. And mm -hmm. I think that the biggest ways in which I've surprised myself because I don't say no to things. I think you're right on with yes and. It's like the universe brings you something and you go yes and serve it back. You know what I mean? You're not saying no, 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 no shuts down everything that's coming to you instead of allowing you to take it and build with it and move with it and play with it. And so I don't, I'm not going to say I never do this, but I'm being aware that When things come to me, I let them be there and really show up with it without knowing what my answer will be, without knowing mm. if I want to go deeper or not. And then I surprise myself by the things, some of the things I say yes to. I've gotten involved in, you know, I, I had these, these projects come into my life about building eco villages and I'd never been interested, never considered. I started getting interested in community had no interest in it except for a few until a few years ago and then now i'm really interested i have um i'm i'm actually like partnering with someone to create a board game i had no interest in that and it's and it didn't happen like will you create a board game with me yes it was more like hey do you want to play let's hang out and see what we might like to create we'll put all of our interests and dreams and like what would we like to do and it ended up that this was something and i'm like yeah Actually, I want to see if I can do that. And there's like that. If I think I know who I am and what I exactly what I want in life, which is different than knowing like what I want in the moment, right? That's different. I miss out. I miss out on so many delightful things. Mm -hmm. The lights, yeah. This is what I like, really like what uh, Catherine Price was saying. You know, like really you know, go around like, I can't remember what she what term she uses, but this is how I get it. Like, you know, capturing the lights, capturing them. You know, it's just these like two second things where we see something beautiful and you just capture them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's lovely. So we're gonna be you're gonna be doing a, a workshop for me and my my community on April the sixteenth and I'll, I'll provide links in the description and things so that people can find it. And it's on breaking all your rules, right? Do you want to tell me a little bit about that and what people can expect to experience and enjoy or, or not expect, but <laughs> get surprised yeah, by me? I, I think it's really follows on to, from all we've been talking about. It's um, really seeing some of the things that um, aren't fun anymore. And seeing seeing some of the things that have been fun in the past, and um, just try and understanding our particular take on playfulness, and 
you know, I would say break all your rules, but it, it's this thing. It's like not being so rigid. Allow yourself to do something slightly different. And um, yeah, I share other things about my story, you know, because I I studied chemistry at university, and then like, I don't I don't know. I don't want to go into my story now. But anyway, <laughs> you know, it's it, it's our part. Our, our lives can be very meandering, and when we open up into complete trust, lots of amazing things happen. You know, it's not all woo woo. It's just, it's just we we see them. We see the opportunities that before we didn't weren't able to see them. They present themselves. Perhaps they always were there, right? But um, yeah, we open ourselves to synchronicities, which is uh, yeah, it's my take on playfulness. Anyway, in an hour, in a nutshell. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I have attended a past version of that, and I I thought there were some really interesting reflections and questions posed throughout that I think will be very rich and appreciated by the people in my community who, if they hang out with me for any length of time, they have some desire to be more playful, even if they think they are not. So, <laughs> and they're at least enjoying other people playing around and enjoying themselves. Yeah. And that's yeah. good. Just enjoy other pe people. You know, we don't have to be like <laughs> somebody else. Mm -mm. Um, I mean, I'm opening up another thing here, right? Because it's like all of us are a bit envious of other people, you know, and it's envy is like painful. Eh? It's like a painful. But when you, we see it as like actually it's an invitation, that's how we would like to be, you know, it helps us. It like loosens this uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's wonderful. So I'll very much be looking forward to that. And if someone's listening, and they would like, of course, please come attend Anthony's workshop that he's doing for our audience here. Um, but where else can they go to find more about you, Anthony? Where's the best place they can go? They can go um, on my website, anthonytraher.com. Um, I've started to write really a lot of blog posts now around playfulness in all these different forms. And... Um, <laughs> And I I run this playfulness festival in Italy at the end of June, Giocos Mente Festival. It's got its own website. It's very wild. It's a very wild festival. <laughs> it's like camping. There are some like uh, some lodgings, um, but it's just like you just really come back to your playfulness there. And um, and I've been very interested in um, taking people through their play histories. You know, like a play history deep dive. Um, there's a lot that we forget about, uh, like when we were little, that uh, when we remember it, we think, why don't I do that anymore? You know, and it just becomes more present. Um, you know, there are kids that when they're younger, they dance on tables, things like this. They don't do that anymore. I mean, it's just to say that like you're a mover, you know, in your life, your way of playfulness is moving. So you need to put music on and dance with people and, if you're not moving your body in a, in a creative way, then you, you feel it and you miss it. Mm. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. Well, thank you so much, Anthony, for sharing this and for your quest of playfulness. Really appreciate that. And more of it is a true blessing for the world. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you all the, all the listeners as well. Thanks so much for joining me for today's Wildspire conversation. If you'd like to receive a weekly Wildspire email from me filled with inspiring stories, unmarketing experiments, tips for playing your way to impact and income without the hustle and hype, insights from my spiritual business journey, and more, go to theawakenedbusiness.com forward slash Wildspire. Until next time, may you know yourself as the gorgeous wild creation you are.